Let's talk about Jedi Survivor. The first gameplay trailer for the next upcoming Star Wars game dropped on Thursday night at the 2022 Game Awards. EA have also confirmed the game will be released on March 17th, 2023. The sequel to Jedi Fallen Order will take place five years after the first game. Cal must stay one step ahead of the Empire's constant pursuit as he continues to feel the weight of being one of the last remaining Jedi in the galaxy. Cal Kestis himself, Cameron Monaghan, was in attendance to reveal the trailer, so let's go ahead and dive into everything new that we've learned about Jedi Survivor in terms of both plot and gameplay. The gameplay trailer begins with Cal opening a Bacta tank. A new character emerges, who is implied to be the main antagonist of the game, as he says, quote, The order is gone. I was betrayed by the one I trusted most. I will not be imprisoned again. This is definitely the same guy we saw in the Bacta tank back in the teaser trailer. Some shots shown later on seem to suggest he could be a former Jedi from the High Republic era. He's wearing the same golden robes of the time period, and his complexion seems to suggest he was in the Bacta tank for a really long time, maybe even the hundreds of years dating back to the High Republic era. Then again, that could just be his species. No one ever said he's a human, but that silver hair really did have me thinking Targaryen. It should be really interesting to learn more about his backstory and what his viewpoint on the galaxy during the Dark Times will be like. He could even be this masked villain who duels Cal with a yellow lightsaber. The hilt does look pretty High Republic-ish. The character could also lend itself well to the game's title, considering both he and Cal could be survivors of fallen Jedi orders. See what I did there? We catch up with Seer, who's undergone quite the makeover over the past five years. She also seems to have constructed some sort of Jedi library, much like Jocasta New did post Order 66. Maybe this will act as our home base throughout the game. It's a little concerning that we don't see the rest of the Mantis crew at all, especially Grease and Marin. There's even a shot of Cal and BD-1 flying the Mantis themselves, and seemingly crashing it. This is only reinforced by the previous trailer, which had shots of the crashed ship. Maybe Cal is gonna pull a Mando and ditch the Mantis in favor of a newer and faster ship. Another interesting aspect of the trailer was the inclusion of these two characters, who appear to be bounty hunters or some sort of mercenaries. They're seen with our High Republic Jedi antagonist in one shot, and are confronting Cal in another. One of them are a more humanoid species, and the other is a larger hulking creature who taunts Cal by reminding him that his kind are supposed to be dead. Both could make for some pretty fun boss fights. Another new character in the game will be Bode, who's seen helping Cal up in one shot, and the two perform a sick looking combo in another. Towards the end, Cal ignites a lightsaber, which looks to be the same lightsaber hilt as the yellow saber we talked about earlier, and it's revealed to have crossguard blades. Again, looking very High Republic. That's about all we have to go off of in terms of story. Now let's talk a bit about gameplay. If anything, Jedi Survivor's new trailer focused far more on gameplay than story, considering, well, it was the gameplay trailer. We're going to be facing off with a ton of new enemies in this game. Sure, there are the different variations of Stormtroopers that we're already familiar with, whether they be the standard, heavy, or scout type. Two Black Series action figures that have already been released already revealed the Riot Scout Trooper and KX Security Droid armed with an Electro Staff. The most interesting Imperial foe, in my opinion, has to be this droid which closely resembles the Dark Troopers from The Mandalorian or the training droids that the Bad Batch faces off with. I believe they did also make an appearance in Star Wars Rebels. We're also going to be facing off with plenty of former Separatist battle droid variations, we also knew of this through a couple of action figure releases, but we finally saw them in action. There's Magna Guards like the ones who often flanked General Grievous. There's a ton of B1 battle droids as well as B2s and BX commando droids. My real question is, who are all of these battle droids serving under? We'll also be facing off with more creatures this go around, as two boss fights look to be against this brown wampa-like beast and a red Triceratops looking thing. But we won't be forced to fight every creature that we encounter, as Cal will be able to use some to traverse different terrains. 
this could be a very fun mechanic for getting around the maps faster. This time, not only will Cal be able to fight with a single or double bladed lightsaber, it looks like we'll be able to use two singular blades at once, something we've all been hoping for since Jedi Fallen Order. Cal is also going to be carrying a blaster this go around, an interesting choice to say the least, but it could add a fun element to combat. I mean, if Kanan could use one, why not Cal? Another shot shows Cal using a grappling hook to swing over a chasm. That should be a ton of fun. Overall, this game looks like it is going to play very well. But what's in store for us in terms of bonus content for Jedi Survivor? There will be a few different editions of the game, as well as a pre-order bonus. The pre-order bonus will include cosmetics based around none other than Obi-Wan Kenobi himself with the Hermit outfit and lightsaber set, as well as the Combustion Blaster. If you opt for the Deluxe Edition of Jedi Survivor, you'll get cosmetics based on Luke Skywalker and Han Solo in the Galactic Hero and New Hero cosmetic packs. The Galactic Hero includes the Scoundrel outfit, the Rugged BD-1 cosmetic, and Han's DL-44 Blaster. The Rebel Hero pack includes the Rebel Hero cosmetic, based on Luke's Yavin Ceremony look, the BD Astro BD-1 cosmetic, based on R2-D2, and the iconic Skywalker lightsaber hilt. But that's not all. There's still the Collector's Edition of Jedi Survivor. This will likely be the most expensive and highly sought after edition of the game. On top of the game itself and all of the previously mentioned DLC, it comes with a full-sized, fully functional replica of Cal Kestis' lightsaber hilt. This will be on par with the Legacy lightsabers sold at Galaxy's Edge in the Disney parks and is supposed to be compatible with those blades, although one is not included. It also comes with a magnetic box for the weapon, certificate of authenticity, and an official steel book. It is also entirely possible that retailers like GameStop will have their own bundles, but that's what we know so far. We're not sure if there will be any post-launch content like Fallen Order's surprise little update that brought us Inquisitor Cal and the Practice Arena. I imagine we'll learn about a few missing pieces of the game's story, like Grease and Marin's whereabouts, in the Jedi Battle Scars novel, which is going to tie in both Fallen Order and Survivor, undoubtedly filling in any important gaps in our story. This might end up being a must-read prior to the game. We might just have to pick it up and make a video about it. We touched on it briefly in our news video last week, but the book's premise is as follows. Cal Kestis has built a new life for himself with the crew of the Stinger Mantis. Together, Cal's crew has brought down bounty hunters, defeated Inquisitors, and even evaded Darth Vader himself. More importantly, Marin, Seer, Grease, and faithful droid BD-1 are the closest thing Cal has had to a family since the fall of the Jedi Order. Even as the galaxy's future grows more uncertain by the day, with each blow struck against the Empire, the Mantis crew grows more daring. On what should be a routine mission, they meet a stormtrooper determined to chart her own course with the help of Cal and the crew. In exchange for help starting a new life, the Imperial Deserter brings word of a powerful, potentially invaluable tool for their fight against the Empire. And even better, she can help them get to it. The only catch? Pursuing it will bring them into the path of one of the Empire's most dangerous servants, the Inquisitor known as the Fifth Brother. Can the Imperial Deserter truly be trusted? And while Cal and his friends have survived run-ins with the Inquisitors before, how many times can they evade the Empire before their luck runs out? That just sounds amazing. It would be super cool to see an Inquisitor like the Fifth Brother in Jedi Survivor as well. I mean, after Fallen Order's ending, there's no way Vader and the Inquisitors are completely done with pursuing Cal. But that about does it for all that we know about Jedi Survivor so far. It's definitely possible that we will see another trailer before the game's release, but EA and Respawn definitely aren't going to give everything away before March. But what aspect of Star Wars Jedi Survivor are you most looking forward to? Have you already decided that you're picking it up? Are you already sold? Or are you still going to wait for some more details? Let us know in the comments down below. While you're down there, drop a like on the video to let us know that you'd like to see more videos on Jedi Survivor prior to its release. Make sure to hit subscribe if you are new and want to see more of our Star Wars content. We'd love for you to join the Red Squadron. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, and may the Force be with you. Red 5, standing by.